Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, what we are going to do is we are going to be sharing the first things to do on your Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 7. You paid a lot of money for this product, and I want to show you guys some crucial initial settings you want to set up properly to get the maximum benefit of your ownership. So let's dive in and get started right away. By the way, guys, if you decide to buy the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 7, links to buy it at the lowest pricing and maximum incentives is going to be down below. Details of the discounts are going to be in the description box. All right, so the very first thing that you want to do is you want to go to your settings right over here and you want to scroll down and you want to completely personalize your phone by giving it a unique name. So go into about phone and then over here tap on rename and give your phone a unique name. Let me just say Saki. And also notice that it says this name will be shown on other devices when your phone is available to connect using Bluetooth, Wi-Fi Direct, or other methods. So very nice way to identify the phone as you're connecting and also to customize it. Additionally, something really cool here that I love. If you have the blue shadow color or any fold color, it is going to reflect in the icon here. So my phone is the blue shadow color so it shows the blue shadow fold seven icon right here. That is fantastic. Now the next thing you want to do is very, very important. You paid a lot of money for this phone. You want to make sure that the battery on this phone is actually a healthy battery, meaning it is not damaged in any way. So to do that, you want to quickly do this. By the way, the reason you want to do this is because if there's a problem with the battery, you want to quickly return and exchange. So here's what you want to do. You want to go to your application drawer and then go to Samsung Members application, which is always pre-installed on Samsung phones. Tap on Samsung Members. Once you're inside, what you want to do is you want to tap on this button right here, the three lines, and then go over to Support, and then go over to Phone Diagnostics, okay? Tap on Get Started. And it's going to actually, the first thing it's going to do is going to check the battery. It's going to start checking everything one by one, as you can see, automatically. And it's going to give you a check mark. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel that, but you can run the whole thing. That's even better. You can check the entire phone. So I'm going to say stop diagnostics. Okay. I'm going to say cancel on this one for now. And here's all you want to do. Again, you can run all these tests, but it's going to take time. So I like to do the battery, which I think is very important. And here's what you want to look for. You want to look for normal. You want it to say life good. And you want to say capacity 4,400 milliamp hours. If that is all the same as this one, you are fine. This is a brand new fully functional battery. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to go to your settings. Okay. And you can see on the top, you have your Samsung account and your photo. You do want to tap on that photo. It might look empty if you have never customized it but this is the next step in customization. Just tap on it, and then you'll see the same photo right here on the corner. Tap on it, and now you're able to go to your gallery and you're able to customize that photo with anything. So here's a photo of mine. I'm gonna use that as an example. Allows me to pick it. Beautiful split screen view because of the large display. But again, I tap on done, and I tap on save, and that is going to be my avatar for my Samsung Galaxy account. It's going to show up across the board everywhere, as you can see. Now your phone looks much better. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to go to your settings, and this is going to be for protection of your phone from malware, spyware, and stuff like that. It also is going to be dependent on who you got your phone from. If you have an unlock model like mine, you're going to see this option. So you scroll down and you go over to device care, okay? And at the bottom, there's an option that says app protection, by default, it is off. You want to tap on that guy. You want to turn the app protection on. You can see when you turn this on, it's going to be safe from malware and other suspicious activity. So I'm going to tap on turn on. And again, right over here for confirm. And when you turn this on for the first time, you'll see it says last scanned never. So you want to quickly scan the phone to make sure there's nothing wrong with the phone. So I'm going to let this run. It is scanning every installed application on my phone. So let's see what kind of results we get at the end. All right, so we're almost done. It's going through every single application. At the end, it's going to say, no threats found. 
So that was your first scan and it's good to go, okay? Next step, you tap on the button right here, go to app protection settings and make sure auto scan apps daily and auto scan when installing apps is turned on. So it will do that for you automatically. So now your phone is secure and safe from malware and viruses for free. All right. Now the next thing I'm gonna talk about is something that is pretty amazing. A lot of people miss this. So first what you wanna do, before you really get deep into your phone, you wanna pinch the screen, go to settings, and then make sure the cover screen mirroring is off. When you turn this on, it mirrors what's on the outer display to the inner display. But that defeats the purpose of this phone. This phone is supposed to be two products in one. So you have a phone on the outside and you have a tablet which is right here on the inside with the larger display. So when you have this turned off, by default it is on. So turn it off and apply. You are able to customize this home screen separately from the home screen on the outside. So you'll have your tablet layout and your regular phone layout on the outside completely different. On top of that, here's something amazing. Look at this, I have a wallpaper right here, okay? Now when I go on the outer display, by turning this off, you will notice that I do have a different wallpaper. Let me just log in real quick. You can see I have a different wallpaper. That is because the wallpaper on the inside and on the outside right here are in fact separate. So when I pinch the screen and go to wallpaper and style and tap on change wallpapers, let's say I wanna pick something from my AI wallpapers right here. Let's just make something new really quickly. I want a building built from sapphire in green and teal. I'm gonna tap on generate, get myself a brand new fresh wallpaper. And then when I apply that wallpaper, let me just pick the one that I want. This one looks nice, tap on set. I'm gonna say both lock and home screen. Tap on next, boom. Now I have this wallpaper on the outside as you can see and also a different layout on the outside. Additionally, I have a wallpaper right here on the lock screen that is different, okay? Same as the wallpaper on the cover display. But look at this. When I unfold the device, I still have the other wallpaper on the inside. Additionally, I can have a different lock screen wallpaper on the inside as well. So I'm gonna tap on the lock screen. I'm gonna tap on change wallpapers. As an example, I'll just pick one of these guys right here. Let's just say this one. I'm gonna tap on done, okay? So now I have this wallpaper on the inside display for my wallpaper. And then on the lock screen, I have this guy. But when I fold the device, I still have different wallpapers. And I can also change these to fit my needs. So effectively, I can have four different wallpapers for four different areas. And additionally, like I said, I have a unique setup over here. So if I make changes to this setup right here, okay, it doesn't reflect to the inside. So my outer phone remains completely separate from my inner tablet, as you can see. This is a completely different layout. Fantastic. I do wanna show you guys one exclusive feature I really enjoy, and this is only available on the Fold 7 right now, and it's a lock screen effect. So let me show you what I'm talking about. You go to the lock screen, customization screen. You tap right over here on the left, that's the lock screen, okay? I'm gonna bring in a wallpaper that's a little bit different, so let's grab, go to my recent gallery. I'm gonna grab this cat. So I'm gonna tap, tap it, and it's gonna be right there. Now look at this, I'm gonna actually look at just what happened. The clock shifted to the side and changed its design automatically based on the contours of the cat. So we have a subject and we have a background. The clock will change its shape based on the actual subject. So let me just change this real quick. I'm gonna grab a different style. Let's go with this one. And then I'm gonna go to font and color. I'm gonna make sure I pick this option right here. You can see there's an animation. It is shifting up and down. So I'm gonna tap on that. And then I'm gonna resize this a little bit. And look at the way it just moves around just like that. Now, that's not the only thing. There is something amazing that happens at the lock screen. So I'm gonna tap on done, and I'm gonna to go to the lock screen to show you what I'm talking about. Now, when I turn off the display by double tapping, look at this. We have the cat, it's zoomed in, okay? 
When I double tap to go to the lock screen, it zooms out a little bit, the background becomes all clear, and the clock shifts. So look at that. That is a beautiful effect, and I love it. Okay, so that's something you can do. And again, you can do this with any image. You can do it with a person, another pet, any animal, basically. So play with that, and I think you're going to love that. One more thing you can do is, again, if you go to the settings, and again, this is exclusive to the Fold 7. So if I go down over here to Lock Screen and AOD, and if I go to Always On Display, which is turned on by default, I have this brand new Erase Background option. So look at what happens. So now I have the shifting clock and the Erase Background. So let's see what that looks like. So look at this. The background gets erased. The cat zooms in. When I double tap it, the cat zooms back. The background comes into existence. And you have the shifting clock on top of that. So multiple effects in one make it look pretty amazing, okay? And that's just an example. Like I said, you can do this with any compatible image. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to customize your taskbar, which is going to be at the bottom here. It's going to be this row right here. So look at this. If I go into an application, I get my taskbar at the bottom. These are my apps right over here, and these are my recently used apps. So you can fully customize the taskbar, and also from the taskbar, you are able to access all your other applications. So if you want to use another application like this one and want to do a multi-screen, uh, split-screen multitasking, you can do that from right from there. And if you do have split-screen multitasking, you can also pull it from the bottom, and you can even add another one if that's what you need. So you can grab one more and put it right here. Now I have three applications side by side and I can do multitasking. But that's great. I do want to show you how to customize the actual taskbar. So what you do is you go into your settings right over here. Okay. Scroll down and go to display. Scroll down and go over to taskbar right here. You can see you can turn that on and off. If you don't want it, if I tap on this one, it'll just disappear. Okay. So I'm going to, I want it because I just like the way this is. Additionally, I can remove the three most used recent apps from here by turning this off. Now I only have my regular applications. Also, when I tap this and activate that, I can tap this and I can go from up to two apps to three apps to four apps. And these are recently launched applications separated by this line over here. I have the other applications. Now look at these guys. I'm going to show you guys how to customize this. So again, if I go out here, let's say I want to add additional applications to this bar. Remember, let me show you. If I launch this row of applications is the exact match for this row of applications. So if I add additional applications right here, total, I can have eight applications. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I cannot add any more as you can see, okay? But now when I launch an application, I have total of eight applications. So you can make sure that over here, you actually have the apps that you really need to have. And it's great because for multitasking, it's as easy as just dragging and dropping and doing a quick split screen multitasking or even more if you need to add additional App. So make sure you customize the taskbar to your liking. Fantastic. Let's move on. Now I will show you one more thing. You can see I have my buttons right over here, okay? So I have the button view. You can disable the buttons and get swipe gestures. So some people prefer that. So I'm going to go to my settings. I'm going to go to my display. I am going to go over to my navigation bar. I'm going to switch over to swipe gestures. And now what happens is... Look at this. When you switch to swipe gestures, the app drawer, the navigation bar disappears. You just get this line at the bottom so I can go out like this. Okay. However, if you want to access the navigation bar, you can pull up from outside the perimeter of this line. So if I swipe up from here, I can still access my navigation bar. It looks a little bit cooler and different, as you can see. And I can use it as I need it, as you can see, okay? The same way, 
but it's just a little bit different than the button view. I prefer the button view, but you can have the swipe gestures, no problem. Now this device is perfect for media consumption, especially in the tablet form factor. So let me show you a couple things you can do to maximize your multimedia experience. Number one, you wanna to go to your settings, okay? You wanna go over to advanced features right here, scroll down and make sure the video brightness effect is actually turned to bright. You can have it at normal if you want, but that's not good enough. The bright just makes watching videos and movies superior. So it says it increases the screen brightness and make colors more vibrant when you watch videos. And you can apply it to specific installed applications. So if I have YouTube, Google TV, or Pr Prime Video installed, I can enable or disable for specific applications but I always have it enabled and most apps turned on. It just, you will see the difference when you watch a movie without the bright and with the bright enabled. So that's for enhanced video quality. What about sound? You have stereo speakers. So let's get the best sound. So in the settings, go over to sounds and vibration, scroll down and go to sound quality and effects, and then make sure Dolby Atmos is enabled, okay? This is gonna give you that surround sound-like experience. Again, when you're watching movies, listening to video or voice, you can do it manually if you want, or you can do auto, the phone will choose for you. Now, sometimes the auto doesn't work perfectly, so I like to choose it manually, but to make it even more easy, you can actually access it right here from the corner, pull down, and that's gonna bring the quick toggles. Here's my volume slider. I can press and hold on it, and I'm able to access Dolby Atmos right here to quickly modify it based on my needs, okay, without having to dig into the menu. So that's a fantastic option. So again, you can press and hold and get additional settings. You can also press and hold on the brightness slider and get additional settings if you want, okay. You can also press and hold on the icon and get go into the actual display settings as you can see. So there's a lot of things you can do in the quick toggles here as well. Now one more thing I want you guys to do with your battery is go to your settings and this is gonna be very important for people that are thinking of keeping the phone for a long time. So go over to device care right here and then go to battery. And then you'll see the battery protection option. You can turn this on and what I recommend is, I recommend basic protection. Maximum is for people that just want ultra long battery durability. So you wanna keep this phone for five years, you wanna maximize the battery life, you can do maximum and maybe keep it at 85%. That means the phone stops charging at 85%. That will prolong your battery's lifespan, but it's gonna reduce the battery's daily life because it doesn't charge all the way up to 100. But believe it or not, it actually protects the battery for longevity. So it's up to you, I just do basic with the adaptive protection turned on and that also uh, extends the battery's lifespan. So again, it's not that important if you are somebody that just trades in your phone every year, you can just turn this off. But again, if you're gonna keep this for four or five years, boom. All right, let's move on. All right guys, so that brings us to the end of this video. These are some of the first things you wanna do to enhance your ownership, but of course, we're gonna have even more. So stay subscribed. We're gonna get you guys more tips and tricks and features. Any questions, drop below. For now, have a fantastic day.